this YouTube is a little bit of background about the dipoles and some calculation about trimming the ends of the dipoles to get the resonant frequency. So if you want to skip straight through the, uh, the preliminary stuff and just go straight to the calculation part, go to this many minutes. Enjoy. This YouTube came around because uh, I originally gave a talk in 2018 to a few radio clubs and they said hey, that would be really good if this was on YouTube. Well finally got around to doing it. So the housekeeping stuff, not really relevant on the YouTube. <laughs> Description stuff, we're going to have a little look generally about uh, dipoles. That was the original talk, It was uh, it's about two hours long so it's really condensed down. Just a brief uh, explanation about dipoles and materials. The electrical stuff, obviously, uh, looking at the, uh, the RF fields, etc. And the calculating stuff. This is where we actually work out how much to use and what to trim back, etc. So here we go. What is a dipole? Here's Wikipedia's uh, description. Pretty straightforward. In our terms, it's a wire going each way with uh, a feed point in the middle. What does it radiate like? Well, if this gentleman was the radiator and uh, everything in front of him would receive a signal and everything behind him, but not necessarily in the direction of his hands. So if we were to fly a drone or a helicopter up from in front of him from this position, go up in the sky, quite high and look down on his head. The, uh, the diagram on the left with the red is what we would see, so behind and in front. It's not strictly like that because it's a little bit more omnidirectional but mainly a dipole will re radiate uh, front and back uh, as you can see the wires. The wire thickness versus the bandwidth, uh, it's not too much effect here. Here's uh, an example of some cables. Generally the thicker the cable, the wider the bandwidth. But here, in this demonstration, um, you can see this, this is modelled. Uh, it doesn't really make so much difference as it's worth putting up really thick, heavy cable. Unless you're going to be pumping kilowatts into it. Uh, you can get away with just about anything. You can see that the thinner zip cord is 270 kilohertz bandwidth at 2 to 1 and the 4 mil had 310k at 2 to 1. So use anything you can. I use even thinner than zip cord and I suspend it uh, or cable tie it to some paracord. So the paracord takes the tension and the, uh, the thin cable I use is just cable tied to it. So generally you would measure a 2 to 1 bandwidth by looking at an SWR chart like this and you can see the cross on the left. Uh, let me see the area this area here is where the SWR line crosses through that 2 to 1 line. It runs through resonance and at the bottom there, so that's where it's actually resonant. And up here to the high point where it crosses again through that 2 to 1 line. So what you do is you take the high frequency, you write it in a chart, you take the low frequency and you take one away from the other. So for example here you can see 7.23 minus 6.96 is 0.27 of a meg. So just to summarise that, it's not really worth worrying about putting weighty heavy cord up that's going to you know, hang, hang down, cause a droop or whatever when you can get away with the thinner stuff. Where does your dipole start and end from? Well basically it's from the two big arrows at either end. It doesn't matter how much uh, space you have on the insulator in the middle as long as it's you know relatively close in you can get away with a spacer of one centimeter between the uh, terminals or 10 centimeters it doesn't really matter the key point is the external the extremities at either end are half a wavelength so don't sweat the small stuff uh, like I did when I was learning I was taking off the gap in the middle there doesn't really matter Here's um, some examples of dipoles, what you can use for dipole uh, centres and insulators. They're all very good. 
the uh, the one on the top left is a you know shop bought uh, item which is very good um, has an SO239 socket on it so you can prepare your coax at the bottom uh, put it up there tape it up and that's pretty much all you need to do um, or another very good option which you wouldn't believe how strong they are are the um, the pill bottles the medicine uh, tablet bottles there you push and turn uh, that lid pop a little hole in it tie a knot in a cord and then you pull against it and uh, they're immensely strong and they're readily available I'm sure so there, there's just a few examples all right that's the uh, the kind of background bit about uh, dipoles now on to the calculation side of trimming the dipole uh, chop 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 <laughs> or not as it says here here's some different uh, ways of calculating the wire lengths that you need um, my favorite is the calculator with the exp button lots of different brands of calculators out there would all typically have that or scientific calculators shall I say would all typically have that button you can use a spreadsheet you can use uh, the 2468 method uh, which we'll cover later you can model using computer model using uh, ESNEC, Mamanagal or Fornec ESNEC is paid for software Mamanagal and Fornec are I believe open source or you know, some free uh, kind of software but they're all very good and then there's the real world 2468 we'll get to that later okay so once again just to review overall the dipole is a half wave in its full length from the big arrows end to end here so each leg or each side of it is a quarter wave the process we're going to follow is to calculate using whatever method cut the wire install test it once it's installed come away with the figures recalculate cut and then install it again and then just verify that we're correct so to calculate one of the methods is the 2468 so what that is is 468 divided by your frequency in megahertz will give you uh, the half wave so that's the end to end in total in feet you're going to translate that to meters and um, from here on we live in the modern world we're going to do this talk in meters because you don't often see oh yeah we're going to work the uh, 65.9 band no <laughs> we're going to work the 40 meter band or the 20 meter band etc so from this point onwards the talk is in meters so we worked out uh, first of all using the uh, 2468 method that what we want in this example at 7.1 megahertz is 20.09 meters on a calculator we could work that out by the uh, speed of light divided by the frequency and then divide by two to get our half wave so on a calculator we would push three the exp the exponential button eight divide by seven point one and then the exp six and that will give us forty two point two five meters i.e a forty meter band we would divide that by two to get twenty one point one three meters but remember that is a half wave not the quarter wave legs that we need so why is there this variation um, we looked we saw one calculation gave us 20.09 meters and another calculation gave us 21.13 meters and then of course you got the magic 468 figure well the 468 is just uh, an, an average uh, site I guarantee you if you reverse calculate these figures back you will not get 468 you might get 452 you might get 470 anything but once you know that figure you can use that in the future for your um, your antenna site so we take our 21 meters and we divide that by two to get the quarter wave and that should come out uh, as in our examples here 
as 10.04 meters or 10.56 meters. Now, after having put up many antennas, I have to tell you, it's a pain to increase the wire. It's much easier to decrease the wire. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over the top bigger than their largest figure there. So our largest figure was 10.56 meters. Let's say 10.7 meters on each leg. That's what we're going to cut. So we're going to cut our uh, wire, we're going to install it uh, on the dipole outside wherever you're going to put it, you're going to raise it up to where it's going to be and you're going to measure it. When you measure it you're going to be damn lucky if it comes out at 7.1 megahertz, more likely it's something else. So in this example I'm going to say that we've cut our antenna, we've put it up to test it and we found that it's resonant, i.e. its lowest point on that graph that we looked at earlier is 6.9 megahertz. Oh dear, we wanted 7.1. Well at least now we've got two figures to work with. So just to summarize that again, we wanted 7.1 megahertz and we actually got 6.9. So we're going to calculate Actually, at this point, I need to tell you, we're looking to get that lower frequency because that lower frequency means a higher wavelength, a longer wavelength that we can trim back. If that 6.9 megahertz was above 7.1, say 7.3, you're in trouble because you need to be cutting some additional pieces of wire to stick on the end, solder on the end somehow. Not so good for the waterproofing aspect. Okay, so a lower frequency for us is better. That's why we used a higher figure to cut. Okay, so our example here going on is that we want 7.1 megahertz and we actually found that we had 6.9 in the sky. So we need to calculate a quarter wave at each of these frequencies. So first of all, we're going to put out what we've got in the sky figure on here and in this case it's 6.9 megs so we do that same calculation 3e8 divided by 6.9 e6 gives us our 43.47 meters then we're going to divide that by 4 to get a quarter wave which is 10.86 meters Our next step we're going to calculate the 7.1 meg so here, this is the same calculation for 7.1 and you can now see that we've got two figures they're 10.86 metres and 10.56 they simply subtract one from the other and that will give you, in this case, centimetres so remember the 10 is hundreds of, meter, hundreds of centimetres and the 56 is of 100 so we can say 10.86 minus 10.56 is 30 centimetres. Guess what? Go outside, drop the antenna, cut 30 centimetres off of each end. And at this point, I would say pull the insulation along so you kind of seal the end uh, somehow. Tape it off, squirt some uh, jubbly glue in there, whatever. Just try and stop water ingress. So. We chop 30 centimetres off each end, put the thing back up in the sky, go indoors, use our lovely test equipment again, and measure it, and you should find it's pretty darn close, if not bang on what you wanted. There we go. I hope you enjoyed it. Like I say, I've got a website, va3sii.com, also uh, this YouTube channel. And that's it. Enjoy. So this video, if you like it, or the old, comment down below a thumbs up. Thanks for watching VA3SII. Bye.